I was not necessarily inspired to be an artist when I was much younger. Uh, I used to write a lot and I was very interested in sciences and then I would do illustrations to illustrate my writing and and then the the pictures kind of took over the the rest of it and um, and then eventually I was focused almost entirely on fine art but I would say that I was probably later getting started than what uh, a lot of artists are I, I couldn't say that when I was three I decided I was going to be an artist it wasn't that way for me although it is for a lot of people that start younger so um, that was pretty much how things worked out that I got started I was inspired by different kinds of um, art when I was really young I remembered going to the Art Institute in Chicago once and seeing a painting from across the room of some kind of a landscape of some sort. It was an Impressionist painting, and I might have been 10 years old. And then when I walked up real close to it, I could see that this duck on the water was just a flick of white paint that was just done so perfectly. I was so inspired by that and, and how anybody could do anything with just a brush stroke that would represent something that from far away it looked like somebody had really painted this duck or swan, whatever it was. And I had learned painting early, what was called a direct method of painting, where you're painting on the canvas and every stroke counts. Every, every color, every stroke counts. And a lot of times you're blending on the canvas as you're working, uh, but it's, it's done very quickly. As time went on, um, that very rapid painting and being able to execute brush strokes uh, very quickly and accurately was still important, but it was how you would look at some of the earlier parts of my compositions that you'll see things that are laid out that way. But over time, my style changed where I was doing more intricate paintings, more intricate compositions, and that also necessitated doing uh, more intricate planning in the beginning where you have uh, drawings and um, I measure out a lot of things now for symmetry, especially for the larger paintings so that the composition is balanced. And I spent a lot of time measuring things out where before my painting style was much more spontaneous. The themes and subjects I work on, I've been working on a series of biblical paintings telling biblical stories, some of the narratives from basically Genesis to Revelation. Um, that's important to me because I think that our relationship with God, our relationship in that whole narrative from the very beginning to when you get to Revelation where it talks about the last days, it's really important for each one of us to understand where do I fit in this? And I try to communicate these stories in new ways. Um, there's always something funny in the paintings or whatever, but I try to use kind of a contemporary um, style of painting with a um, very ancient theme. Uh, the last couple thousand years that's gonna continue for who knows how long. I think because I think that that's important for each one of us to decide where, where do I land on that? What is my relationship with God? Do I believe in God? If not, why not? Um, that's the most important decision anybody can make, I think, in this life. The advice I would give to inspire an artist would be don't quit. I've often heard, um, well, once, I, can't, I think it may have been Degas, had said, if you make it to 40, you'll make it. I know when I was in school, and I know a lot of artists starting out, maybe they're going to college, that kind of thing. You're in your 20s. Somebody who's 40 seems ancient. It's not. It's midway in your life. And if you make it to a certain point where you develop your own style, you're developing an expertise, and, and you keep going, you have a shot at making it. Um, it's good to have different 
avenues of income, perhaps a lot of people may, may teach, um, do other things, but uh, it's, it's very difficult to uh, make a living as a fine artist. I mean, you may have hundreds of thousands of them, say, in the United States alone, and, and name a few that are famous. You're going to name them on one or two hands, maybe. There are very few people that actually make a living at it. But I would say the be best thing is to, if you're good and you have to be really able to assess your own work, uh, really go to museums and look at the work in museums compared to yours. Is yours as good? If not, get better, keep working. And if you're good, like really good, don't quit. Just keep going. People will hear about you. People will see your work. Doors will open up as you go on. But if, if your work is not great, maybe go into graphics or something. The competition is really fierce, and you have to be really, really good to be able to make it. So keep working and on developing your style. Keep working on developing your expertise, knowing why you paint what you paint. Those are all important things and just to keep going.